so today I will uh, present a brief history of the, the methods we develop uh, within the Olum project and that is focus uh, on the detection of free and serified minor compounds. Um, as you all know, nowadays we have several um, analytical official methods that help us to, um, to check both the quality and the purity uh, of olive oil. Among the methods, uh, the official methods that we have for uh, the assessment of the purity, we have uh, uh, the total uh, sterols method. This is because, uh, as all you know, the um, sterols, and particularly the sterols profile, uh, is somewhat characteristic of uh, each uh, vegetable oils and uh, uh, in a certain way reflect the uh, botanical origin of an oil. Uh, so the, uh, the IC method, uh, which probably uh, all of you already know, uh, and that is uh, summarized in, uh, in this picture, uh, start uh, at the beginning with the saponification. So with the saponification, so with the treatment with the right -hand solution, basically we liberate all the uh, compounds we have in the unsaponifiable matter into the uh, free form. And this is uh, helpful because uh, applying the procedure, we are able to define uh, the, the serials profile that must be the four coherent with one of a pure olive oil, help us to define the total amount of serials and uh, also to, um, to identify and to quantify other important markets like erythroidol and glucol. But if you want to uh, highlight uh, a, a critical point of this uh, procedure, we can say that this, uh, the first step, I mean, the saponification will uh, uh, inevitably uh, lead to uh, lose of uh, some uh, information. Some information that can help us to uh, increase our ability to detect uh, the presence of uh, the addition of uh, illegal, uh, uh, for instance, seed oils in a virgin olive oil. This is because, uh, um, as you can see from this figure, uh, minor compounds uh, are present in vegetable oils uh, in uh, two different forms, in the free form, of course, but also in the certified forms. And uh, applying the IOC method, we lose the information related to the certified fraction. That's why uh, within the Olum project, we uh, develop uh, a method for the detection of uh, not free and certified minor compounds, not all the serials. And uh, as you know, this is not the first attempt at developing method uh, um, devoted to the detection of these target compounds. Uh, but what we can say that the previous published uh, method uh, were sometimes uh, employed in uh, complicated instrumentation like LCGC, so we don't want for an official method, of course, uh, uh, complicated uh, instruments or uh, require huge amount of solvent, reactive, uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, toxic solvent, et cetera, et cetera. So we try to manage uh, all these aspects uh, and we uh, develop the method that is summarized in this slide that uh, is quite simple method that started with uh, a direct derivatization of the oil in order to, uh, to make the polarity of the free compound we have in our sample much more closer to the one of the esterified fraction. In this way, we are then able to purify both free and esterified minor compound by using a simple SP glass, SP cartridge packed with uh, silica, and then uh, um, both free and esterified compound are analyzed by GCFID using a, a cold on column injection mode. Uh, so moving to the uh, in-house validation, for the in-house validation, we selected three different types of oil that you can see in the table. And uh, first of all, it is quite clear that the level of free and acidified minor compounds are quite different in uh, the three different types of oil. But uh, what is important now here, just to have a look at the uh, coefficient of variation that is lower than 7.6% in all cases, so the, the uh, repeatability of the meter was uh, quite nice. Uh, we also applied the meter to um, a big number of samples, Euroys, legal blend, legal blends. Here we have just uh, an example of the results obtained analyzing 15 pure extra-virgin olive oil collected in different countries across the Europe within the Olin project and uh, five refined uh, sunflower oil purchased at the market. Um, what we can say, just having a look at this small data, is uh, that uh, uh, there is no differences basically between the content of free compound uh, 
uh, in exo-region olive oil and refined sunflower oil. The level is quite similar. But the big differences can be observed for what considering the 35 fraction. Because in exo-region olive oil, we have uh, uh, from 300 to 900 milligrams per kilogram, while the level is significantly higher in uh, sunflower oil. We have around 2,800 milligrams per kilogram. This means that the, the esterified fraction is probably the most diagnostic one for uh, uh, the detection, at least, uh, of uh, uh, illegal addition of sunflower oil in uh, extra virgin olive oil. Uh, of course, uh, at the moment, we have not limit, uh, uh, we have not fixed any limits, uh, because even answering to, uh, to, the, to the comment of uh, uh, Dr. Del Monte yesterday, um, for, for doing that, first of all, we need to have uh, a fully validated method. We are still working on that. And uh, secondary, uh, for uh, establishing, uh, I mean, uh, um, safe and robust limits, uh, uh, we need uh, a really massive and exhaustive sampling uh, uh, that take into account the, the wider number of possible of variables into the, the, the collection of uh, Olive oils uh, like uh, geographical origin, of course, uh, different uh, here production, uh, period of harvesting, extraction technology, and so on. This uh, goes beyond the oil project, and of course, uh, the, the objective that we fix at the beginning of the of the project. But uh, having a look to a small study that we have done here, just to uh, give you an idea of the potentiality of the methodologies. Uh, here we um, added uh, different percentages of uh, sunflower oil to a pure extra virgin olive oil, uh, from 2 to 20% of sunflower oil. And even when all 2% of uh, sunflower oil were added to the, to the virgin olive oil, uh, a, an increase of, the, of around 14% of the certified fraction uh, was uh, observed. As well as a decrease of 8.7% of the ratio between free and the certified minor compound. This means that even addition of a small percentage of an external soil, uh, in this case, some flower oil, can lead to a bigger changes in these two parameters. So the total certified compound and the ratio between the free and the certified compound. Then, as a uh, pool, uh, and uh, or even Tassos uh, showed you previously, uh, this method was uh, uh, submitted to a pre-trial studies. Uh, nine external laboratories uh, participated to this uh, uh, pre-trial. Uh, here we have a map where you can see the, where the labs, the, the different labs were located across the Europe. The results were not so nice from an analytical point of view because the, uh, the reproducibility was uh, quite bad, you cannot say. The, 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 the reason is uh, uh, summarized here because uh, uh, what I can say is that uh, several labs perform important deviation from the SOP. So we have changes in the solvent employment and the type of uh, injection mode, uh, as in this, the type of silica, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and this was not so a good experience, I would like to say, from uh, uh, the uh, analytical result we obtained, but was a really important exercise uh, for the improvement of the SOP uh, to be delivered to the labs uh, who participated in the final uh, proper trial. So here we have just some uh, uh, extras of the SOP that reported this slide. You can see that we added after the trial some warning. So a warning uh, um, about the uh, necessary to use uh, a specific type of silica, uh, the use of a glass tube, uh, the mandatory use of a colon column injection, uh, how to integrate uh, the chromatogram, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in order to avoid any mistakes uh, from the labs uh, when uh, performing the, the trial proper. The trial proper uh, has, uh, has been done, and uh, 12 laboratories uh, participated in, uh, in the evaluation of this method. Uh, so I would like to acknowledge them for uh, uh, taking part to this, uh, uh, to this study, uh, even in uh, the, the, the historical moment is not so, uh, so easy. So thank you to, to everybody. 
um, the, uh, the result, once again, uh, uh, were not so nice, especially for what concerning the reproducibility. The repeatability, as we can see in the lower part of the slide, was, um, can I say, acceptable. Uh, the reproducibility uh, was quite bad, especially for what concerning the esterified fraction. However, however once, uh, once again, I have to say that most of the laboratories that has been involved, even in the trial proper, made important deviation of the SOP. So we have, once again, uh, uh, labs that uh, used a different type of silica, that changed the sample preparation, that used a different injection mode. So uh, this, those types of deviation inevitably lead to a uh, data dispersion that will be reflected in a pure reproducibility value. This is something obvious, and this is what happened. Uh, so, uh, for instance, in the certified fraction, we have labs. Uh, we have two, uh, more than four labs that were not compliant, and even for the ones that has been included in the data operation, made some deviation, minor, we can say, but not so minor, for the SOP. Uh, this table just uh, make a comparison. Uh, of the re uh, repeatability or reproducibility obtained for free compound and the certified compound uh, compared to other official methods. Uh, it is true that we cannot compare uh, these methods because we are measuring different analysis with different procedures that have different uh, those molecules, different concentration in the sample, but just to have an idea that the repeatability was not square. And the, even the reproducibility, at least for what concerns the free minor compound, uh, it is quite close to the ones we can have in boxes or in uh, ethyl ester at a lower concentration. Um, so the idea of this table is not to compare, of course, the behavior of the different methods, but that you, just to give a message that probably if you are able or if you were able uh, to uh, enroll and a higher number of uh, participants that uh, had followed it correctly, the SOP, uh, the method probably uh, will have lead to a uh, better result in terms of uh, reproducibility. So just concluding my uh, small presentation, uh, the method that has been developed compared to the previous uh, uh, studies is a method that uh, requires a really lower volume of solvent, uh, uh, so we replace a longer glass column with the SP. Uh, we use a lower amount of silica and uh, we replace uh, the more toxic exam with isoplan. And those one are just some of the uh, main advantages of this method compared to the previous one. And, the, and uh, in, uh, what I would like to say is also that this method has been at least in-house validated and the results were quite nice. Uh, the concluding remark is that, of course, the, uh, probably something can must be optimized for what concerning the esterified fraction. The whole project is uh, now finishing, but uh, not the job we have to do regarding this meter. So I hope that in the uh, in the near future, by involving a, a bigger number of labs that will exactly follow the SOP, uh, we we will be able to draw a line and a robust conclusion about goodness, or maybe the evidence of these methodologies. So thank you to everybody. I finish.